Hello guys, Ryan here for the London Craftsman. Thanks again for coming back. And today's video is all about my ultimate workbench. So stay tuned, watch to the end, and I hope you enjoy. Right, just one more thing I wanna run by you guys. If you can, go to our Instagram and give us a follow there. That would be absolutely amazing. We've got 700 followers on Instagram, which is brilliant, um, but we've got 22,200 on YouTube. There's a bit of a difference there. Um, we do a lot more up-to-date stuff on Instagram, day-to-day -day stuff, uploading pictures and videos of what we do in between our YouTube videos. So give us a follow there, that would be absolutely amazing, and we can follow you back also. Just one other thing is, if you do like our content, please give us a like, thumbs up, um, if you find our content interesting, um, give us a subscribe. Any comments in the bars below will be great. Um, but apart from that, enjoy the video. So we've been working hard, or shall I say Sean has been working hard. I've been dossing in the background, doing some painting and measuring up while Sean's been here. Pinning and gluing 100 and how many? 150. 150 pieces of all these strips glued up. Basically, we're at the point where we're gluing up. We've got eight frames ready to go, ready to clamp up um, into their frames. Two uprights, top and a bottom. Two have got a central division as well, which are gonna be dominoed in rather than tenoned in, or like an open tenon. And we decided to go down the birch ply route because we can make the bench look nice for starters. Um, birch ply is a lovely material, you can stain it any colours, yeah, I like the edges seen. It's got a lovely grain, it's tough, obviously anything laminated is probably as strong as it can be. Absolutely solid and we've laminated it in a way where we can make ourselves an open mortise and an open tenon. So there is no machining. We've just created re something really simple. A little piece of birch, um, two pieces put together a little corner. We laid it on the bench, made sure it was nice and level on the bench, clamped it down, and we used that as our guide to put our strips up against, glue the strips. When we glued the strips, we put it on with a bottle and then we used a gloss roller to spread that glue out nice and fine. And then we just continued to pin. Couple of pins, 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 just making sure we weren't gonna get any pins where our dominoes were gonna be, or where our tenons are gonna be, etc. And what you see here is all the eight frames complete. So really chuffed the way they come, come out, they're straight as an arrow, absolute straight as an arrow, really tough, strong components. And, um, they have to be because you know they're part of the intent they're the integral strength of the of the actual bench so the way it was going to be it was going to be three frames one two three and then we've got sort of like a tunnel carcass running through the center of them so the the frames give the bench rigidity and the tunnel squares it all up and turns it into like a cube in a way um, or a box so I thought that was gonna be the easiest, easiest way for me to make the bench, and this was all down to plans as well. I wanted it as simple as possible for people to be able to make their own bench in the future. And I think this is the, the best way, so you don't need a mortar saw, you don't need a tenon machine, all you really need, if anything, you don't need to pin them, you can just glue and clamp them up. Just try to make it as simple as possible. So we're at the stage where we're just gluing, like I said, and if we just give you like a little mock-up, so okay, let's put that on here just because we've got a stable, well, let's just put it here because it's a stable workbench. What's that? That's the top. Uh, yep, okay, well, sanded faces up. Sean's gone over all the scene faces or edges, whatever you want to call them. What grades do you use, Sean? I use... 60p, 120, 240. Okay, and what machines did you use? Just 
belt sander and the oval. So show the belt sander, we just used the 80, well, you used the 80 on that, didn't you? Yeah. 80, and then you, you were just very careful. I, I explained that if you're too harsh when you're coming up to the tenons, when it comes to squaring the frame up and putting the frame together, if you're going too harshly on the tenons, you're just going to curve them over and you're not going to get square edges or square frames, are you? So we're really careful on that. And then we just worked on our, the rest on the orbital, yeah? yeah. Is that what you did? Yeah. 120, 240. Yeah. Um, just in case you want to know, this Makita sander is the BO6030, okay? Five inch, is it five? No, it's a six inch, yes. 150 mil. We have went up a, um, a number, didn't we? Because we used to use five inch. Now it's, it's so much better using a bigger sander. So they're ready, ready to glue up. Um, one thing that we do need to be careful is as we're gluing, because I want to possibly stain these, I'm not 100% sure what I really want to do. It's mostly likely going to be an Osmo. I don't want to get glue everywhere. No matter how much you clean that glue up after, it's in the grain. I see people clamping up their work, Possibly they're just painting at the end of the day. So if you're painting afterwards, it doesn't matter. Um, but because these are being oiled, any glue that goes into the grain, um, whether you wipe it off or not, is ultimately sealed the grain, um, which means you're gonna have patches when you come to oil. So that being said, let's flip it around. You can see the pin, pin holes. Two, 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 yeah. Sean's gone for one, two, one, two, so it's even pressure. And we didn't, just, we, we didn't clamp these at the end. We've seen people laminating before. I've seen YouTube videos um, of people laminate and then they clamp it afterwards, but I just didn't feel the need. The joints are absolutely tight. There's no gaps in between any of these joints. So I didn't feel the need of clamping. So, okay, just so we have a good, the good face forward, pins at the back because that's going to be inside the bench. Two uprights, which is this one. Again, pins to the back. One. And this is the beauty of this technique, is just simplicity. Everything slots together like a glove. Look at those joints. And if you get your jig right and you pin it right and it's square, and again, look at that. It just blends in. Look how tight that joint is. And we've done nothing other than pinning it in the right place with our jig, just being as accurate as you can. Okay, so top's going in. There we go. I'm gonna go around that, Sean, and just show, show people. Nice, chunky frame, four in thickness. One, two, three, four. I've actually put this around the wrong way. This is the unsanded side. Anyway, it just gives you the, the taster of what it's gonna be looking like. Because there's gonna be three, there's gonna be one, two, three, and then the, the carcass, the tunnel carcass runs through and they all get connected. You get me now? And then we've got another carcass of the bench. Again, another bench is here. One, two, three, then a tunnel carcass runs through. And these would just get joined with bolts. Once the tunnel carcass is in, your bench is nearly there. You literally just put a top on the top. So that is my technique. Um, today we are, we're gonna be gluing, aren't we? Gluing, we're gonna just make ourselves a nice flat surface to glue these on because we don't want it to be twisted. And we might just pull out this little bench here to the center, put a nice slab I find a nice slab of 18 mil or 25 mil MDF, make sure it's level and just work on that. Some sash clamps. Um, guessing one, two, one, two, two. So four clamps. Um, our roofing square as we're doing it. And just let the glue do its work. Then if we really wanted to, we can go around the other side and pin through the mortise and tenon. I'm not gonna do that in the front. We could, if we, we don't mind waxing, but again, we don't know what color this is going. So we're most likely not going to, we're just gonna let the glue do its, its work. We're getting nice resistance on the mortise and tenons. So I know that once that glue goes in, it's gonna be solid and the glue is gonna to be touching all the surfaces. 
Okay, so that's our progress today. Hopefully in videos to come, I'll be able to give you some more progress. And before you know it, we'll have these carcasses made up. So I hope you enjoyed guys, take it easy, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao for now.